Hello, everybody, uh, to this week's lecture of SLUT 7829, Text Analysis and Corpus Linguistics. Today, we'll have um, a different focus. We'll not work with text. We'll actually work with speech. So let's get into how you analyze speech. Well, the first thing that we need to talk about is that speech is different from text, right? So when we analyze text, we focus on tokens or sequences of tokens and then compare the frequency of tokens or patterns um, in one corpus um, to their use in another corpus, right? So that's typically what we do. Like when we, for example, compare um, text produced by a lower proficiency to higher proficiency learners of English, then you can consider these two um, text collections as two corpora that we compare, right? And then we can, for example, analyze sentence length or number of errors or other features in the two corpora, right? But when we analyze speech, we do not focus on tokens so much, but rather on features of speech, sounds, and compare these features across sounds and groups of speakers. So, for example, we analyze how does one sound differ from another or how do, uh, for example, learners differ from native speakers. Also, in terms of procedures, uh, their differences, but also their commonalities. Now, when we uh, analyze a text corpus, right? Typically, we uh, have a research question. We then go and find a corpus or compile a corpus. Um, but most often, we actually use data that's already there. And then we process the corpus using software tools such as AntConc or TagAnd or Python or R, right? And then we analyze that information either in Excel or again in Python or R. Now, when we deal with speech, typically we have to either find audio data or actually record audio data. Then uh, we need to align the sounds to the transcripts or we have to produce transcripts. And then we need to extract uh, speech features, which we do with a different software that is uh, called Prat. There are other similar types of uh, software, but in this course, we're going to focus on Prat. And then we um, analyze that information also using in Excel. All right. Now, when we analyze speech, right, we need to be aware that it's a little bit different, right? So in this course, we can't really go into detail as analyzing speech is obviously uh, quite diverse, and but also very versatile. But therefore, we focus only on analyzing vowel sounds, at least in this part of the course, right? And in, um, when we look at vowel sounds in English, vowel sounds in other languages are different, but in English, uh, they mostly differ in length. So if you have a long E, like in heed, and a short E, as in hit, they differ mostly in length. So compare heed and hit. But also, if you look at um, the vowel chart to the lower right, you see that the long E, heed, is actually uh, produced uh, with the tongue raised more to the front of the mouth, right? Whereas when we produce a short E, the tongue is not raised as much, right? So it's actually quite a bit uh, lower. So the diff the, we differentiate E, so long E and short E, mostly by length, but also there's a difference in tongue position. And tongue position is really the second important feature, right? So if we look at uh, E and U, as in heed and hood, um, they differ mostly in tongue position, right? So when we produce the E, uh, our tongue is raised at the front of our mouth, while the tongue is raised uh, at the back or to the back of our mouth when we produce the U sound. Right, And now when we produce these sounds, we produce something that is called formants. So formants are concentrations of acoustic energy at certain frequencies. So what we do with our tongue is we modulate the sound that is produced by our vocal folds. Right, But I'm not going to talk about uh, acoustics here a lot because you should basically have picked that up in other courses. So here we're just going to look at the um, formants, how they are portrayed, and then how to extract them. So the first formant inversely corresponds to tongue height. So um, what that means is that the first formant can tell us where the tongue is when we produce that vowel sound. The second formant can also tell us about um, the tongue, right? But it's about fronting. So F1 is about how high the tongue is raised, and F2 is about 
uh, where the tongue is, right? Whether, whether it's uh, to the front or in the back of our mouth. And the good thing is that we can actually use the software Prat to extract features of speech from audio data. So Prat can actually, um, we can use Prat to extract performance, but also uh, durations. And that is what we're going to do in the remainder of the session, because today we'll perform a case study on extracting vowel features using BuzzMouse, Prat, and Excel. So we use BuzzMouse to align the sound and the transcript. Then we're going to use Prat to extract the vowel features, so the duration and performance. And then we're going to use Excel to visualize the result. So the case study will show how we use BuzzMouse to force align the transcript to the audio data and to generate uh, text grids. Um, and then we use Prat to correct the force alignment and to extract form and frequencies. And we use Excel to analyze and visualize the resulting uh, vowel chart, right? Now, before we start, we need to look at a couple of things. So here, for example, what I've done is you don't see it, but I can see it. Let me show you. Come on. So here I have a list of words, right? So I have heed, 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 hit, 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 head, 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 had, 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 hot, 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 hood, 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 and hood, hood, hood. And you don't need to do three times, but here I just repeated these words because I wanted to have more than one uh, measurement point, right? And so what I did um, before this lecture is I recorded myself um, producing these words. I recorded myself in Prat, but can use any other software or audio um, to, that records yourself. And then I just extracted or um, saved my audio as a WAF file. Uh, WAF, but you can also uh, use MP3, but MP3 is actually not that good because MP3 will um, compress the data, right? So it will uh, basically um, reduce the amount of information that's in the audio signal, whereas a WAF file is bigger, but also it retains all the information. Um, so I just want to show you real quick what I did, right? So here, if we open Prat, um, this is what we see. We see um, basically a main window and then we see a image window. And what I did is I um, recorded myself, right? Um, when I produced these uh, sounds and then I had an audio. Let me show you what that audio looked like. Um, here we go. Um, where do I have it here, right? And then uh, you can uh, play it. I'm just going to play it here. All right. I'm actually not sure if you can hear me. So let me just check if I can um, share my sound because that I think would be quite important. So here, where do I say share? Um, I hope it should work. If not, it's really just a recording of me producing these vowel sounds, right? So that's what I what I used there. And then I did something else. Um, I had the um, the recording, and I had these um, these sounds, right? And optimally, what you need to do is you basically take that recording, create a new one. It here, and then you should have each word on a different line, like this, and then you save it so that it has the same name as the audio file. So the audio file and um, the file with the words, where each word is on a separate line, you don't have to do that, but it makes it a little bit easier for the program to understand that, right? So actually, I used this, but it was still fine. Then I went to a program that is called BuzzMouse. That's a Clarin service. So um, Clarin is a research infrastructure um, that is funded by the European Union. 
And what you can do here is you can do something quite amazing. You can first of all, select a language. In my case, I know that I don't have a strong Australian accent, but I still chose Australian English. And then I um, loaded my uh, text and my WAF sound, right? So just the sound and the transcript, which contains the words that I produced. Um, that I produced um, into, I just basically drag and dropped it here. And I said, upload. Live well. I accepted the terms of service and then I ran the web service. And what now happens is there's an algorithm that aligns the speech, the audio signal with the text file. And let me show you what that looks like. I downloaded the zip file, right? You see it here. And then I can open the text grid and the sound in Prat. So let's go back to Prat. I can say open, read from file. And here I had the WAF sound and the text grid. And I'm going to open them now. So now I have the sound and I have the text grid that was produced by Buzzmails. And I wanted to view that now. And now let's zoom in a little bit, just so that you have a better understanding of what's going on. So here, um, what has happened is the algorithm has realized that this sequence is actually a heed. And then it has produced uh, basically a uh, transcription in um, phonetic notation saying that first there was a huh sound, there was an E sound, and then there was a this sound. And it has done something different. Namely, it has also segmented the uh, signal into different um, areas. Now, the problem is that the segmentation in this case wasn't actually great because if we listen to the whole word, we can do that by highlighting that section and then we click here and I, at least, he, hear heed. I don't know if you hear it too. But now what you see is that if I click just on the E, it's just e, it's a very, very short part of the E. It's actually not the entire part of the E. So the E, oh, sorry, is a lot longer than what Prat accounted for the E sound here. That's because my pronunciation was a little weird. But now I corrected that. And now it has a much longer section of the E here. So I just moved the boundary here, right? And now I can correct it. So if there was an error in the forced alignment, so the alignment of the audio and the text, um, and then basically segmenting um, the speech into individual sounds, I can correct it just by switching it over a little bit or moving it over. Like, for example, here, again, I need to extend that a little bit, right? Now, there's something else that I did. So here, this is the E sound, right? And now what I can do is, let me actually make this bigger. I can say I want formants. But before I extract formants, I need to check the settings. And this is actually important. So if you're, if you're a male speaker or if you're dealing with the recording of a male speaker, you need to set the formant ceiling at around 5,000, sometimes uh, also a little bit lower depending on the voice. Then you can change the number of formants. Uh, five is, the default is actually fine, right? If you deal with a female speaker, you should actually um, make the ceiling a little bit higher so in that case, the recommendation is 5,500. For children, it's actually 8,000, right? So that is something that you need to do before you extract the formants. So here you say apply, good. And now I can go to formant listing. And what I see now is that here I have the time, time measurement, and then I have the hertz frequencies of the formants. So you see that at this time, at one second and uh, four, um, 
yeah, well, four hundredths uh, of, a, of a second, you see that uh, the first formant was at 261 hertz. The second formant was at 2062 hertz and so on, right? Now, you also see that there's actually measurements that are undefined, but it's actually not that uh, important. But if I'm happy with the alignment here, so I really think that the boundaries are correct, then I, and the formant settings are okay, I can then extract the listing and then I do something else. I copy this, right? I just say control A and then control C. Here I opened, um, uh, I opened TextPad and then I replaced the spaces with uh, tab stops, right? And then I opened Excel. You don't see it, but there are geckos on my window. So now I have these hertz frequencies that represent the formants, and I'm going to put them in here. So this is the time, um, F1, F2, F3, F4. And here I'm going to say trial because um, I have three recordings of each word, right? So this is the first trial. Then I had a word. And in this case, that was a heat, wasn't it? I'm going to check in a moment. And then if I want to um, make this run through, I click on the lower right until there's a black uh, cross. And then I just double click on that cross. And here I want an ongoing ID. So again, go to the bottom right, there's a black cross, and I double click. Right. And then I went back into Prat. Right, so it was heat. And then I went to the next vowel sound. I listened to the vowel sound by basically highlighting the E, then going here in that little window. So there actually a little bit of the hook is still in there. So I need to change it a little bit, right? Let's make it a little bit shorter. E, E, that's fine. So now this is the second E. Again, I can check my settings. 5,000, good. So I can extract the format listing, right? And now I don't need the header, but I again, highlight everything, copy it, put it into uh, text pad, and there I replace how many spaces do we hear? One, two, three. So I replace three white spaces with the tab stop. It's all. I let everything copy it and put it into cell. And then I add it here. This is my second heat. So here I can just continue with heat. And here I want to continue that, right? And because it would take us too long to do this, but I literally just went through the text grid here. I adapted and checked the uh, alignment. And whenever there was something that I had to correct, I corrected it, right? In this case, um, that's actually fine. And listen to it. Oh, it's actually not fine. I need to put it a little bit over here. Let's listen to the E. Yeah. So that's fine. I then again went to formants, format listing, and then again I highlighted everything, copied it into text pad, replaced three spaces with a tab stop. Tab stop because if we want to copy something in Excel, at least for me, um, cell content is separated by a tab, right? And then I have the three here more heats and extend that. So I did that for all the different words that I had in that recording, right? So now what does that give me? It gives me the time and the hertz values and the um, minimum of the time is the point in time when the E starts and the end point is when the E stops, right? So, and the distance between the maximum and the minimum is the duration. And then I have all the Hertz values here, right? 
And as you can guess, I've already done this for all of the sounds, right? Uh, just exactly what I just showed you, just did it for all the vowel sounds. And then I created these um, visualizations here, right? So, so far, just to recap what we've done, I've recorded myself saying words. You can also take uh, any other recording. And if you have the transcript, you can put them into um, buzz mails and it will force align, uh, force align the audio with the text and it will create a text grid, right? Which is basically a way to um, show which sound corresponds to which uh, part in the text. Now, the problem is if the recordings are very long, the force alignment doesn't work properly, right? So it should actually be short recordings um, and then it works quite nicely. And then when you work with the text grid, you need to actually um, check the alignment, whether it has worked properly, right? And then you can um, input the information into Excel, right? So just to show you what I've done here then, because you see that it has resulted in visualizations. I then highlighted my table and I said insert, and I wanted to create a pivot table from a table or range. No, actually I did something else because now we would have all of the values even below, but I only wanted those up to there. So I created a pivot table from table or range, which now has this range. I want it to be in an existing worksheet, namely I'll do it again down here. And now if I do that, we can create our pivot table. I wanted to have the word that were my rows. Then I wanted to have the formed F1, but I don't want the sum. So I want to change the value field setting. I want it to be the average. And then I take F2, and I also want it to be the average. So I go to value field setting, take average. And then I looked at time. And for time, we don't want the sum of the time. We want the minimum. So the starting point, then we'll take time again. And we want to take the maximum. Right. So now what we have is we have the words, the average F1 and the average F2. I should say, I haven't mentioned this, but we're only looking at monotones, of course, right? So we're only looking at vowels where the tongue position remains rather stable. You also have um, diphthongs where the tongue moves from one vowel sound to another, which means that the tongue is shifting during the production of the vowel, right? So I, for example, would be a diphthong because the tongue shifts from the A position to the I position, right? So I, there's a movement in the tongue. With the monophthongs, you don't have the tongue movement. You also have triftongs and even um, vowel sounds with four, I heard. And a triftong would be fire, because you have I, Right? So there's actually movement from one position to another and then to another. All right, but now we have this, um, this pivot table here. The only problem is we can't uh, directly use the pivot table for plotting. So I copied um, the values here and let's just put them in here as values. And I said, this is my F1, this is my F2, and then this is my minimum time, this is my maximum time, and from that I can calculate the duration. So if I want to calculate the duration, I just say take the maximum minus the minimum. Um, now you have to be careful because that would be uh, for all the vowel sounds together. Right, so that's actually not uh, super accurate. So um, you would have to split it up by try. I'm just going to leave it here for now. Um, this is just uh, an example. So if you wanted to do it properly, you'd actually have to do it by uh, trial. And then for each trial, take, take the, um, uh, sub subtract the minimum from the maximum of each trial. That will give you the, uh, the accurate uh, duration. All right, but now 
let's look at how you create a val sound. Uh, sorry, a val chart. So this is the val chart that I already created, and it's actually quite similar to the um, um, val sound here. This val chart is um, based on tongue position, however, right? So you also see that the E has the highest position, the U has um, the highest in, in the back of the mouth position, and the other vowel sounds are lower. You have the E and the A and O um, down here. Um, yeah, so here this is basically based on tongue position, but if we check our data here, you'll see that you also see some similarities, right? So E and U are at the very top here, and uh, the A um, is the lowest, right? So there's a correspondence uh, of the acoustic signal to the tongue position. It's not a perfect fit, but it's actually a quite good fit. And the good thing here is that um, it's really based on the audio signal uh, rather than on tongue position, because the tongue position is actually quite, quite tricky to extract, right? Especially... Uh, when you just have the audio data, you can't really say something um, too much about where the tongue really was. So you take these approximations. Now, when you look at this uh, already existing VAL chart, you see that I changed a couple of things because if we just plot these values, you see that that will look differently. So let's have a look. That doesn't work very well. Let's actually take another one. Let's take this one. So if you look at that, it looks a little bit different, right? But let's actually use, no, let's actually do something else first. So the first thing that we want to do is when you look at the bell chart up here, you see that the axes are reversed, right? So it's not that the um, starting point is here, right? And then you have uh, increasing values going up and to the right. You have that uh, the starting point, the zero coordinate is in the upper right. And then the higher values for F1 uh, go to the left here on uh, the top, and the F2 values increase by going down at the right. So the first thing that we can do is we click on, sorry, I don't want that First thing we do is go um, have a right click here on the chart and we select data. And the reason is that I want to edit the data, right? Here, that's the F1. This is the F2. Oh, that could actually work. Ah, okay. I remember we first need to reverse the axis. So let's. Stop that, say cancel. Want to click on this format axis, and here tells you values in reverse order. Cool. Let's just move that again. Now we have a weird thing, looks like. It has worked. Uh, and now we need to do the same thing here with this axis. We also need to reverse the values. All right, so now we have the thing, same thing as here. But what you see now is that um, the he will want actually different values up here, right? Uh, let's just check. Of course, yeah, I actually made a little mistake. Don't worry about it. I'll sort it out in a moment. This should actually be F2. That's why I was confused. And then this should be F1. Sorry, that was a mistake that I made earlier. And you see that here, we have the opposite situation, right? So we have the F1 on top, and here we have the um, F2, which is not what we want. So in order to change that, now we can select the data. And now we need to edit the data. 
So here we say that this should actually be this. Then here, this should be this. So, okay. And now we see that this is already much more similar. Also, I'm just going to copy the title. And I'm going to click in here and uh, I'm going to add access titles. So here, this will be my one. This will be my F2. And then I wanted to change the colors. Oh, sorry, no, that's not what I want. I'll just have to go back. Okay. Don't want the outline, don't want that. I want to, why does it look different than I did? No, 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 no. No line, I want the marker. So I want a solid fill, and here I also want that to be black. But why do I still see blue there? All right, so now we have the points. Good. Now we need to add data labels. What did I do here? Just made it all black. Okay. Okay, and now we can check. So which point has 246? You can check here. 246. Um, none of points that can be. What am I doing? Oh, let's start here. Okay, so 619 that is hand. All right, and 261 that's a mood. Uh, 482 is had. 390 is good. 341 eat. 472 is odd. 432 is Board. and heat is that, of course. Right, so now we have a val chart that we've created based on our own production, right? So we had the recording, we had the transcript, we lined them, we force aligned them uh, using bus mouse, we extracted the formants and the durations in um, RAT, and now we've uh, used the formants to create an acoustic uh, vowel chart. Just one more thing. Here, I want that to um, be aligned differently. How do I align it differently? I want it to be like that. So that it's easier to read. Right. 
I don't want a sort of line around that. Uh, outline, no outline, but so this is our bell chart, right? Or you, if you record yourself, that's your personal bell chart. You can then compare it, for example, to uh, native speaker bell charts to see what vowels um, you're producing native like and which you are not. Um, you don't have to, but you know, if you're interested in that, you want to sound the native like, that's one thing you can do. Right. You can also um, plot the durations. Um, it doesn't make that much sense in this case, as I said, because this is the entire time, but I'm still going to show you how you can do that. You can say insert, um, recommend the chart. That actually works. Uh, we don't need F1. We don't need F2. We don't need the minimum. We don't need the maximum. And now we can format um, style here. You can say fill, for example, any color you like. Take one. We don't need this here. Um, we can just copy our title from here and say these are the durations of English bells produced by an advanced uh, German learner of English. We can again add um, access titles. So here, for example, I'd like to have duration seconds. That like that. And then you can also change format here. For example, you can say the minimum should be that, maximum should be two. You want to have it like that, right? And then you'd have a, um, a chart showing the durations. But be aware that this doesn't quite work in our case because um, I haven't separated, by, uh, had separated it by trial. Right, so this is actually not an accurate, um, an accurate uh, duration plot. But this is how you would do it. Right, only you need to separate the instances by trial to get that. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. Um, so, as I said. And we've used bus mails to force align the transcript and the audio data uh, and to generate text grids. We then used Pranat to correct the force alignment and to extract the formant frequencies as well as the times and thus the durations. And then we used uh, Excel, in this case, not to analyze, but to visualize the resulting data in a valve chart. So that was it for this week's um, lecture. We're going to practice what you've just seen uh, in the tutorial. And we might actually also look at certain consonant features. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun. Uh, have a great week, everyone, and see you next week.